Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How are you? And welcome to Goggle Frogs. This is Tuesday. And do you know what? I love number orders. This is episode one, two, three. If I'm driving the car and I suddenly look at how many miles I've done, like in this car, I was waiting to see two, 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 and then three, three, three. So it's, uh, I just like seeing those number orders. Don't know why, but never mind. So how many uh, but, have you done in your new car then? Sorry? How much have you done in your new car? Uh, about 1,700 miles. Well, I suppose you're going to Leeds and back, aren't you, already? Mm. Yeah, it hasn't done much in the last two weeks. But the first, <laughs> in the first week I got it, week and a half I got it, I put over a 1,000 miles on it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the days when you used to have to run in an engine? I know. Although, can I just say, I didn't have enough money to buy a brand new one then, so I never bought a brand new car, although I did have a friend who did. What, driving 50 miles an hour until you've done the first, I don't know how many miles. Mm. I couldn't have done that ever. So, um, just as well, um, at that point, I always had second-hand cars. So, um, <laughs> you had a reconditioned engine, you, were, you had to run it in. You are. Even if you had a reconditioned engine, you had to do the same. You had to run it in. I've never run a car in. I've run it into plenty of things, but <laughs> touch what I work with this one. But I've never run a car in ever. So, no, Richard, I'm sure he told me that. I know. People tell me I should have done, but it's just, I'm sorry, it's there to be driven. So if it's got four wheels, if it's got petrol, if it's insured, it's going. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll get in the car as long as it gets me from A to B. Yeah. It does remind me, um, I remember when I had my daughter. It, so did you have MOT, did we have MOTs back in the early 1970s? I can't remember. Never mind. We did in 1988 when I got my first car. I'm talking about 1974. Probably. I'm sure there would have been. I happen to be outside the hospital as another girl was leaving with her new baby and she was leaving early she her and the car she got into without a word of a lie was literally held together with newspaper and string because the 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 passenger seat well all you could see was rust and newspaper and uh, the nursing sister or the maternity sister was absolutely livid because she it was two days after the birth of her baby that uh, and she said oh they're travelers what do you expect oh no do you know oh. what i will tell you a little story about my car that had things holes all over so um but cars back then we we ran them differently they they were built to sort of last um and there were certain cars that you bought that they said the engine um the, the engine will go forever you just have to keep replacing everything around it um and i had one of those cars but i'll tell you about it in a little while uh, so good morning i hope you've got a cuppa um i've got my cup of tea here's my cup of tea that i didn't drink earlier that's probably cold um and here's me nail polish that i was going to put on as well with me um and i thought oh just because i need to get it um dried quickly i'll use my i don't know pronounce it shit sesh vita i don't know it's a fast dry, fast dry top cut didn't use that either i didn't even use my uh, hand cream but that's that's what happens when you're rushing around all morning and you'll find out tomorrow evening why i'm a little bit delayed um getting everything ready today um i think it's a bit of a funny story so i'm gonna wait until robert's with us as well so i'll tell you about that tomorrow night but that was quite amusing um why i'm not quite with it this morning <laughs> so um we're on episode two three we are knitting i think well i'm knitting you're knitting are you marion you're um, you're still doing your aunt's cardigan yes second sleeve i finished the first sleeve yesterday oh wow fabulous i did look in the facebook group earlier so if you're new we do have a facebook group it's goggle frogs knit and natter you just have to answer a few questions to go in there and um and then you can post your work so we can all 
congratulate you uh, for your work that you've finished or help you with your questions. And uh, oh, yeah, Angela so died on it. Oh, they know she died. You are. You died on us for a second or two. I died. Yeah, you just went silent. Oh. Oh, don't know what's happening. No. Uh, but hopefully we'll be okay. So let's say some good mornings to everyone then. Whoops. And I know we'll have people popping in later. Um, so I'm going to go from bottom to top as, us yeah. as usual. So good morning, Tracy. Lovely to see you. Tracy. Um, hello, Safi. Good nice. morning. Lovely to see you. And good morning, Marion. And morning. good morning, Lindy. Morning. And good morning, Janice. Oh, and, lovely. And good morning, Georgie. Bye. And, and good morning, Deborah. And good morning, Brigitte. So good morning to everyone. If you can hear, the birds are chirping like mad outside. I've got the door open because uh, it looks to be a really, really good day again. Doesn't it? Is. Like, um, trouble is, if I open up the blind, we'll be studied with light, and I can't see you. <laughs> it's a to put the light on, and I keep forgetting to do my five-bar gate. I mean, this aids me. I said five-bar gate at school, and they went, "No, Miss, it's a tally." Okay. It's a what? Tally, it's not you know one two three four five. It's a tally now. It's called. Do you know what you've just made me realise? Because I was talking. Sorry, I'm I'm waving my little stick now. Um, I was talking to someone the other day, and when I said to them, "Yeah, my dad used to do his weightlifting with a five bar gate," they said, "Oh, can you send us a photocopy of that?" And I'm like, "Why do I need to send a photocopy of a five bar gate?" Now I realise why because they're probably from a different generation to me and I didn't realise it had changed names and was now a five bar tally, not a gate. So thank you for that. Learn something new every day, don't we? I know, I know. It's like, um, what you call, they, up and down the country you call um, uh, bread rolls different things. Oh, cobs. Yeah. Um, Stotties in some places, oven bottom cakes, balm cakes, tea cakes, and I have no idea what you call them in there. Tea cake to me is round flat, you know, and full of fruit, and you split it and toast it and serve it with butter. But you have plain tea cakes, then you have normal tea cakes. There you go. We're all different, aren't we, from all oh. different parts of the country. Right, shall we have a look at the zitcha? Yeah, I'm just I'm just watching my mum. My mum's sitting in the, the garden on her little chair. You know those camping chairs that fold up and then you yeah. can put the, the uh, a drink in one side? Well, my mum loves it and she moves it around the garden um, wherever the, the strongest sun is. So she can well. Uh, she does. She doesn't really sit in it that much, other than when she's sat in my garden. She's 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 sitting in in amongst all of the birds who are feeding and coming down. And uh, yeah, so she's in the strongest part of the sun at the moment. Oh, well, good for her! I know. I know. It's lovely. You sit with her occasionally. Uh, yeah, I, I will do. Although. No, does Splodge come and sit with her occasionally? Oh, does Splodge? No, um, Splodge has only been once this week. So even though there's chicken left for Splodge, um, so we are waiting for Splodge to appear, but by the time he appears, the little bit of chicken that I took off the roast chicken the other night will have gone off. So never mind, it's too warm. Once it gets cooler, Splodge is a feral, and Splodge then thinks, I'm not feeling 100% where can i go for warmth comfort um cat milk food on tap and a nice little buffet to sit on so that's when he rocks up and sometimes spends several days in here so but at least he comes in now i mean i can remember a time when, when he was permanently out in the garden oh no it's a little girl isn't it in actual fact it is i call it a him but it is a girl it is a female a tiny tiny little thing bless it well the only reason why we know it's um, a female is when it first started to arrive and pinch the hedgehog um food 
that were left in the garden in a under a hedgehog house and the cat was dragging it. It had a big white splodge on its side, but then I realised it was actually where it had been spayed and a, a corner, the left corner of its ear was still red. Because what the RSPCA do is if there's feral cats, they will trap them, they will take them in, they will spay or neuter them and they clip the ear off with, um, sounds horrible, clip the ear off with um, nail scissors um, and then it heals up. But then if people see um, cats roaming around, they can tell instantly if it's been spayed or neutered or if it needs to be sprayed or neutered. So we don't have lots of um, little litters of beautiful kittens that are in the wild. Um, so me again, I'm on my soapbox. Um, animals do not have to have a litter. If you find a feral that you think, oh, and it hasn't got its little ear cut, cut off, the corner of its ear cut off, uh, just ring the RSPCA and they will trap it and they will make sure that it's not there. Poor thing, half starving, trying to look after its little kitty cats. Um, so, yeah, so that's why I know. And we called it Splodge because it had a big white thing, but it was the patch of fur growing back that was white first of all and then turned black. Um, and it had just been spayed, just returned to the wild, and the thing will not let me touch it. I can't get near it. Um, sometimes it will come and it will feed out my hand. Um, and that's when it's been really cute. And then other times I'll walk within a metre of it and it will hiss as if I'm about to kill it. So <laughs> there was a very sad story on the radio. During oh, lockdown, no. lots of people have wanted kittens and this woman bought a kitten, paid £350 for it. Uh, and I'm going to cut a long story quite short. Because I think the middle there. No, I don't think. Uh, the kitten did die and the woman has done a runner um but then another um uh, listener uh phoned in and said i've got some kittens and you can have one and um the television uh, the radio presenter seen pictures of both of these kittens the kitten that she purchased was shall we say the size of my thumb and the kitten she's now got is the size of my hand in other words, the first kitten was too small to have left its mum. Um, and that's there are some really nasty people out there at the moment. And if I can, to make money. And, and if I can just ask there. people, please, 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 please. Um, my cat, when I was at my parents, it looked like a British blue. We took it to the vets and they had it down as a British blue. And we said, no, it's a moggy. The, because cats, I believe, can have two different, I don't know how it works, but they, they have all, anyway, um, the mother who was blue Persian had, had, had mated with a uh, black moggy. And so we ended up with this beautiful kitten that looked like a British blue, but didn't have all the health conditions that a British blue might or that a Persian might. So please, please, please go to your local dog centers, animal rescue centers and get a beautiful kitten. They're, um, you know, they're lovely. If you want a kitten, go get one that's looking for a home, um, and let's stamp out some of these puppy farms yeah. and kitty farms because they're only there because people are willing to spend. Uh, somebody that I know spent one and a half thousand pounds on a little dog, and, and when she got there, when she brought it home, it was covered in fleas. Of course, she's gone to a puppy farm. You know, it's like, oh, so if we can just help our people that we know mm. not to go to them. Battersea needs people. The Oxford Free Homing Centre needs people. Milton Keynes, Section League, Cooler, all of these people, they all need help, don't they? And yeah. they've got the most beautiful animals there that are, I mean, they look sad. Of course they look sad. They've had terrible lives or they've just been neglected or not loved. Um, but, do you oh, know what? Protection League. Richard's just bought me a tea. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. Anyway, I'll get off this subject because yeah. I'll yeah. stay on it the whole day. Because, yeah, we could. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, do you want to see what I'm doing? I wanted one of the fingers. Oh, wow. I'm really excited about That was quick. 
<laughs> Very short. Did you see I was getting into that? <laughs> Thank you very I much, Robert. Sorry? I didn't realise it was that old, 1961 to 65. Well, wow. I don't know. But I think I've only ever heard that there's a medley that they play on something and um, like the Stars on 45 type thing. So I've never actually heard the middle bits other than the chorus. So uh, that was nice. Mm, oh. I've never even heard the name of the group, the Devels or Devels or whatever it's Doubles, called. Doubles, Devels, don't know. Um, but yeah, that was nice. So thank you, Robert. Yeah, uh, that was an interesting choice. And I know that um, Brigitte says the, the songs in the 60s were not long. It was released in 1965. Thank you. And uh, Brigitte says, oh, good, Robert found it. So you must have been asking Robert for that. Yeah. That song takes me back. And Georgie, very appropriate, As I th and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was great, wasn't it? It was. It was very um, good. Uh, 65. Um, I'd have just started senior school. Oh, yeah. That's good. Shall we go? Um, shall we have a look at the chat? Yeah. Is saying good morning and one, two, three. Safi is saying morning, lovelies. Oh, that's nice, Safi. Oh, now I've gone too fast. Tracy's <laughs> saying morning. So is Georgie. Um, and Brigitte is. We're going back to the car. Ha ha, Angel, Angela. I do the same with the meter in the car. So she she does it. Come yeah. On, yeah. Oh. I've been with Brigitte in the car and she goes, I wonder how far it is. And that goes the malometer, mal is that right? Um, Lindy says, good morning, everyone. Great to see Marion. Uh, I don't think my husband was this morning because I asked him to make me a cup of tea. I ain't finished my breakfast. Um, <laughs> yes, I remember that, says Tracy. I had a new engine and had to have a sign in the back window stating I could only go under 50. I think saying I was running in a new engine to other drivers as I went on the motorway every day. Also used to have to do the same to new tyres. Oh, I don't remember that. And love your hair, Angela. Oh, thank you. I must admit, it does look very nice today. I like that bit, Take it, you take it back. Um, well, I, I, um, I decided to straighten it today. And then I thought I'd use a different clip which you probably can't see, but I'll put the head right down. And it's one from, it's all little sparkly bits. I love this. So I, I wanted to wear the clip today. <laughs> Sometimes little sparkly bits don't show up. You I know. Quite a lot of bling, don't you? Um, <laughs> yeah, Deborah and Janice say good morning. Morning. He says, at Angela, I do the same as your mum, but with my garden bench on the few occasions when I actually sit in the sun. Yeah, my mum's really enjoying it. She's got her, her eyes shut and she's um, in the direction of where the sun's coming over the house. <laughs> and Trisha says, oh, good morning, Trisha. Trisha morning. Uh, Tracy says, also so many dogs being taken at the moment. Please be careful. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. And if there wasn't a market, if people weren't buying from these unscrupulous people, there would not be a market for them to take them. So again, mm -hmm. let's urge our friends and people who are looking for dogs, only ever go to a proper registered charity. Yeah. Well, that's where we got our Branston from. Did you ever meet our Branston? I did. Great lump. Um, Lovely. I miss him. I still miss him. Um, uh, Brigitte says the songs of the 60s were not as long. Oh, you said that. Um, Anne, hello, Anne. And morning. morning. Um, my daughter and son in law have finally relented and they're going to allow Laura to have a kitten. But they decided way back to wait until October half term. And it looks as though they're probably going to do the right thing 
because I reckon by then some people will have had enough and um, the uh, uh, shelters will probably be overrun by that time yeah young cats and they yeah. don't mind having a young one um, and uh, it'll give them a chance to socialize it properly whilst uh, Kirsten and Allura are off school and uh, but if anybody knows of a cat having kittens they'd love it and they are all used to having animals to give them a plug so but it's taken granddaughter oh easily 10 years to persuade her dad to let her have one she prefer a dog but they don't have the right lifestyle so they i think they're being very cautious and very sensible have you got a problem there angela no i've just got to add up because i'm doing the first finger and i just need to double check if i've done more than 26 rows so i'm just going to try and add up now if that's okay yeah no. yes i do i mean i'm having trouble counting to five with this and that's why i've got to do my debrief i couldn't believe how quickly this was growing yesterday and i was thinking to myself right if i can get the next sleeve done tomorrow this with a bit of luck will be done by thursday and in the post friday wow on, well friday saturday at the latest and then um i will have to warn joe that it is in the post because she lives in sheltered sort of housing the um they need to be aware that there's parcels coming for her um, oh yeah um just in case it goes walk about which is a shame isn't it you've got to be that careful um today you yeah. have um, yeah and i've got loads and loads of stuff waiting to go up to slough it um oh. yeah we had um a donation of patterns um true Brig yeah brigitte marion and a couple of others will remember had all these patterns and we sat around my dining room table sorting them out and i'm still listing them and sending off lists to barbara and i'm surprised actually how many of them they want and the pile is now easily this deep of knitting patterns mind you the pile that they don't want is this deep uh and that uh, is uh, so anybody locally who would like to, shall we say, in the next couple of weeks, probably be by the end, of, beginning of October, want to come round to mine and have a rifle suit through some patterns on a night nice day. I'll put them outside on a table so we can socially distance and see if there's any there you fancy. You are more than welcome. Yeah. Lots of 1980s ones with the big hair and the shoulder pads um quite a few from the 1940s quite a lot of children's ones quite a lot of books um from Woolworths of all places which are oh. they were very very popular um 19 pence for a book of patterns and i'm not talking about four or five patterns but i'm talking about 10 15 patterns um right. which is just incredible um what producer says oh she had a fabulous tomcat when we lived in by the canal and fortunately he died before we moved he would never have adapted to the new surroundings i couldn't cope with any pets anymore now yeah we moved from st Albans to redbourne um and prior to the move, we lived with my parents and we had a cat, uh, Tigger, who with their dog, they were inseparable. And we reckon the cat tried to get back to my parents to be with his mate. And my father, right up until his dying day, said, should never have let you take Tigger, should never have let you take Tigger, should have kept him. Uh, and he regretted it forever. Oh, yeah, he did. And then there was Compo. 
Um, now, he died the same week that Bill Owen did, which is a bit, yeah, that's a bit scary. My father took him to the vet. Um, quite a long journey. And he got out of his cage. And Dad's on a bypass and you cannot stop. And there was Branson sat on the back bar, not Branson, Compo, sat on the back bar of the shelf. And Dad was saying, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? And then he realised that the cat was just sat there like this, watching all the traffic going by. And so, oh, I never know what the other driver saw. <laughs> do you remember those nodding cats you used to get in the back of cars? Yeah, I do. So, is that a real one? <laughs> I hope that wasn't an accident. I do not know. Oh, I'm on row five. I'm on an increase. Uh, that's the beauty of um, knitting with size sixes. Oh, should I say that just before we came on air, I was saying to Angela, can you get seven millimeter needles? Because I can't remember seeing any. I don't think I've got any. And I was just lying in bed thinking, have I got any? Is there such a size? And then I was counting backwards and converting the old to the new. I was going eights of four, sevens of four point five. And then I couldn't remember what was a five. And I but I could not honestly think of what was or would be a new seven millimeter needle. Can anybody else help? please um have you got your 26 rows angela yeah right yeah i'm just taking my next 10 now so next. this is major yarn chicken with this one so that's the first finger yeah there. 26 rows on a rope i can't believe it you know you buy all these things all your knitting life don't you and I'm, I've actually got a garment here that has got two of those on. So that's the back of the neck. And I'm on my second finger now. So um, you have to do tens. So ten. I really hope I've got enough yarn. She's in 26 rows. That can go quite quickly. Yeah. And then when you've done that, you need to plait them all. And then it's um, putting them all back together once you've plaited them. And then you find that you complete it in the pattern that you had before that big, lovely square. So you'll have how many lengths of 26 rows to plait? There will be six on each side. So six from that side, six from that side, and then you have to plait them. Do they give like instructions as to how to plait that many? It's, well, Harry, it's me you're talking to. I haven't read that far in the pattern. Well, I've never been able to plait more than three. No, it's it's not. Um, it all you do is up and over, up and over. So it's that that's that's all it is. So I think that would be quite easy. And then you pick the six up at one side, the six up at the other side, and then you just finish off that that pattern there okay oh and uh, i looked up those pattern that pattern you were talking about yesterday i've written it down at night ravelry and i must admit they've got a sister one i told you didn't i called yeah. knit me and they both look very very nice uh brigitte says that she's only fam familiar with millimeter sizes for needles and hooks and she doesn't understand the english or u.s sizing yeah you know what? A seven, a, a seven mil. There isn't a com, there isn't an equivalent for a seven and a seven and a half. Look at that, because I've got this here. So this is the conversion. If you can see seven, there is no conversion. Seven point five, there is no conversion, and then it goes to eight, because a six point five is a ten and a half, an old ten and a half in old money, an eight is an 11 so the 7 and the 7.5 probably in the uk in the olden days like when i was young we didn't have a 7 or a 7.5 equivalent in our knitting so i wasn't going bonkers no you're not going bonkers you actually um came up that 
in the UK we've never used sevens. Well, we did, but they're old sevens. The the old, yeah. When when we <laughs> used to knit when we were in the numbers rather than millimeters, because that only happened. I don't know when I was young. I always it was always on a size eight, wasn't it? Everything yeah. was on a size eight. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we just didn't have sevens for some reason. Seven or seven point fives. Ah, uh, Tricia says. I think you're looking at US sizes. Seven millimeter is the old UK number two. Thank you. It is the old one. Right. Let me correct myself. Ah, yes. So we've got the proper imperial. So a seven was a two, a 7.5 was a one, an eight was a zero, a nine was a zero, zero, and a 10 was a zero, zero, zero. Mm. Thank you, Tricia. Because I'd never thought about it. It was just before we went live that Marion said, and I thought, oh, well, we can't have had one, but it's in America. They've never had a 7 or a 7.5 equivalent. But we have. But I, I don't ever remember when I was young using zeros for anything. Um, I don't think we had the choice of wool that we had then, but I'm sure there was a need for one for something. I think the main knitting needles back then that people used were nines, tens, no, twelves. It's twelves, eleven, ten, nines, eights, and sevens. I think they were the most popular sizes. If you did a fourteen and smaller, um, then uh, you were down to the really, really small stuff. Um, and I have used a one point five which is smaller i think than a 14 and it is and i i it was like using uh sewing needles i kept pricking myself making myself bleed and i thought i'll give this up for that wagon load of monkeys so that went i didn't the other it. thing as well in imperial a 12 is a 2.5 and a 2.75 i don't know if you can see that yeah. um because that's the other thing that we said. Uh, Marion says, am I going mad with this seven? I went, no. I said, it's like when you wake up one day and you think, is there a 4.25? Is there a 4.75? And if you've never checked before, you don't realise, but there are in three. So anything under four goes up in 0.25s. And then anything over four only goes up in 0.5s until they get to the big ones and it's just single numbers yeah um but yeah so that was our conversation all of about three minutes before we went live <laughs> <laughs> what is it today is it throwback tuesday is it throwback tuesday is it i don't know i'm not very good at these so do tell us what it is and then we'll oh we're on 36 already so we'll have to have a look at facebook why are you scratching out, Ollie? I know you've been fleed. Yes, I know you've been fleed. You don't like this hot weather, do you, Bubs? No. No, he didn't like this hot weather. Oh, bless. Now this room's been done out and the carpet's very dark and the blinds are down and the walls are a pale blue. It's It feels cool because blue is a cool colour. Hmm. So, oh. so this has become his room. And luckily, being a dark blue carpet, you don't see black hairs. Oh, bless. So Ollie is always here. He, he's becoming a real regular now, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wagging yeah. his tail? No, he's flopped no. out. He's flopped Just out. Flopped. Too, he's too hot. Oh. Good. Yeah. Bless. Right, well, we'll show, we'll have a look and see what's in Facebook then. And I know it's. Well, Rogita does say, it. yes, it is Throwback Tuesday. Thank you. Uh, well, we will do in a minute. Don't ask me. You know what I'm like with technology. I still haven't drunk this cup of tea that Richard brought up for me. 
It's a miracle that I managed to get him to bring me up one at all. <laughs> and Georgie's saying, yes, yeah, she loves Ollie and his blodge. Yeah. Oh. Elora put some lovely pictures on my Facebook um, of him having a free run on Sunday. So she tagged me. I think any of my friends should be able to see it. And she called him Smiley Dog. You're having problems? Yes, I am. Um, bear with me. Can you hear, still hear me, Marion? I can still hear you. Good. Okay, we well, still can still... Um, I will, if you can just try and chat and I'll try and solve this, Please, but I may have to it. log out. Do you know what? This, this, this is something that I'm in awe of. I'm in awe of Robert and Angela, the fact that they can sit there and talk and not get <laughs> anything back from anybody. And you're, you're racking your brains thinking, well, what, what can I say that, that people are going to find interesting without feeling as though... I'm rabbiting on and on and on. Because you don't want to hear about me. You probably know you know enough about me as it is. And you know enough about Ollie um, because I talk about him all the time. Um, I talk about the picture house. Oh, I'll tell you what else um, Angela and I were talking about. Angela was saying that um, she's bought herself some knit pro knitting needles, the wooden ones. And... Uh, I was saying to her to be careful because I had all the interchangeables that they do snap um, after a lot of use. And uh, I was very, very disappointed because I bought the lot and I was so pleased with them. I loved them. And I was going, no, mine haven't snapped. Mine are brilliant, no problem. And then blow me down, they did start to snap. Um, and then Angela mentioned Leica, and um, I brought the Leica crochet hooks, and they feel beautiful. Oh my God, do they feel gorgeous! But they're just a straight stick, and I've got—I think it's the silver ones. But I like my crochet hooks with that little indentation in the middle. Um, I suppose it's because that's how I was what I was taught to crochet with, and these haven't got it, so. I've got about six Leica crochet hooks that are surplus to requirements, and that must be about 50 quid's worth. But don't tell Richard, whatever you do. Um, oh, and what's. Uh, oh, Georgie wants to know what I'm working on at the moment. I'm working on my another cardigan for my aunt, Georgie. Um, I finished one. And now, bless her, I'm knitting her another one that she doesn't know I'm doing because this one I knitted up in using different yarn for the pattern. And I wasn't going to have enough yarn and the pattern was well out. Um, and I've done, I'm on the last sleeve. So it's a very pale baby blue. It's Hayfield Baby Blossom Chunky. And I've got this sleeve to finish and that's it. Uh, Brigitte says that she was so grateful that Rod managed to sort out her laptop issues over the weekend. And, oh, brilliant. And Brigitte says that she can't crochet with straight crochet hooks either as she gets awful cramps in the hand. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, I seem to, I seem to hold them. I have to, uh, how do I hold a crochet hook? Isn't it silly? You have to have a crochet hook in your hand to say, how do I use them? I hold them a bit like a pen, but I reckon it's the same with knitting. You can go around a room and we're all holding our hook in an entirely different way. And we're all crocheting in an entirely different way. Can't you get onto Facebook? Yeah, then? I can. I'm back on, ready to go. But now you're Good. talking about crochet hooks. Um I don't know if this company went under ages ago. They're called Lesia, L-E-S-I-I-R. Um, I, I don't know, but they're the most simple crochet hooks ever. They just have that 
you know where they write the thing on so there's a couple of little bits but i find them comfier and they cost me just over a pound each and the company used to be in bradford i think i think they've gone under i don't know they're really really um cheap but if i'm i do like my zings i i will say i like the zing because there's the nice thing to hold it with there that's what i like though that little indentation yeah so so that's nice but i i love those and i bought the whole i went into um haberdashery and i bought just about every single size and do you know what for a whole crochet set it cost me about 12 pounds because they're so cheap um but they i just love the feel of them they're really really nice and i've lost so many of them now i'll never be able to get another yeah, and Brigitte, uh, Brigitte says, I hold mine like a pen, and she holds hers like a knife at dinner. And she, she goes on to say, the hooks Angela is showing are those she can't use. And Jackie says, morning, she's working. Morning. Right, so I'll go into Facebook now. So technical hitch again today but uh it just won't let me go in so i'll try and get in now to show us now yeah you're right lindy whilst you're going L lindy says that there are two standard holes for crochet hook, a pen hold or a knife hold shown in all the books but at the end of the day i'm sure everyone adapts to be comfortable i'm sure you are right lindy that well I, you know we've had this discussion before there's no right no wrong way as long as you get the desired effect and we'll come back to trisha's comment in a minute won't shoot you janet jackie oh yeah sorry i'm back now i can hear you then yeah i shared that yes sorry i don't know if you were just talking then because i couldn't hear what was going on marion um because the system all cut out for me again um but they, i think this jumper is beautiful mm. and what i also love as well and i think this is so pertinent for men's jumpers is that the the neck is really wide because most men's what men want to wear a shirt under the jumper and i think traditionally a lot of those necks are a lot that are really quite um tight so i think that's nice. shared it for two reasons sorry i shared it for two reasons i know and i <laughs> i noticed the comments I have seen the comments because I said, don't think I put that on about midnight last night. <laughs> oh. So this is, anyway, about the jumper. I I really, really love the front of that. I love the cables. Yeah. And do you know what? I can see Robert in that. Yeah. I really can. And, and that's the other thing. I, 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 I thought of three things. You know. <laughs> so I, I really like that. Um and oh what's this about 17 18 years ago when Cheryl first had the second part of the shop I attended a two day two day workshop on stump work this was the result I really should put my initials on it and frame it sometime Le needless to say it remains my only outing into stump work very fiddly and takes forever that is amazing beautiful isn't it I have never yeah. even heard of stump work isn't doesn't that um trisha will know this i'm sure trisha will know this isn't stump work uh, wasn't stump work used a lot in jacobean times um when they did a lot of em embroidery um i i think it was but uh there's something at the back of my mind yeah trisha's going yeah, i think so um but it's fabulous and aren't those colors gorgeous it's out of this world yes you should frame it it's it's incredible um and just the little bumblebee looks i know lifelike it makes me feel really horrible the fact that i killed a wasp just before coming on on 
live, but um, wasps aren't like bees. Uh, yeah, Lindy says stamp work is an old embroidery technique, definitely Tudor and Jacobean, used a lot in on the caskets and picture frames of the time. It's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. I do love seeing what people have done in the past, so thank you ever so much for sharing that, Brigitte. Um, you to um, Hardwick Hall, best of Hardwick. All right. Apparently, we've got the biggest collection of um, needlework, uh, Tudor needlework, anywhere. Oh, wow. Um, I've still got to get there. The one and only time I went was with Jane Barton, and it was closed. Mm. Oh dear. Yes, oh dear. Right. Well, we are going to. Well, I don't know. I've already revealed it, but Deborah, the hat Ooh, is finished. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't. When you said, "Yeah, I'm going to get it finished today," and I'd looked at the side. That's that whole star that you've created. <laughs> oh, that is gorgeous. It is stunning, isn't it? I can't believe. I really can't. It's amazing. Well done, Deborah. That's beautiful. I thought that all the detail was on the outside. Little did I know that so much of it was going to be on top as well. Um, I'd like to see Deborah wearing that or the recipient wearing that. Yes. Um, yeah, it's it's just a, a look at us. We've gone from almost freezing a few days ago um so now it's going to be well into the 20s again today and people are sunbathing um but that's september isn't it <laughs> we're certainly in that season for that i was saying richard that with a bit of luck we'll go through to october without putting the heating on it is it, it, that would be nice um right and then thank you donna for posting this beach themed flannel finished just finished the cut just knitted the colors to see where it went yarn is drops cotton um augments from her stash so i am so so happy to see somebody's um beach thing flannel so mm. i just love the fact that people make flannels i've never made one i say that quite often but i'd love to know uh what other flannels that people have done and, and i just thought these look like little i don't know what they look like do they look like tulips do they look like little flowers is it something on the beach is it people's heads when they've had too much sun it's just so beachy isn't it and the sun and the sea and yeah i love that one absolutely love it uh and then margaret's that we showed yesterday how did we show that yesterday when it no no it's sure we didn't we, it, but it's showing the 17 hours so sometimes facebook does this to us we think that it was yesterday but absolutely stunning and i love 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 the colors that you did the fact that no it didn't it's because i did it when i woke up in the middle of the night uh, made a comment um it absolutely stunning in these colors the camels show so well and the yeah. trees it's a knit along uh link to the guild's facebook page i think you can still do it it's ellie reed did it from a 1940s pattern uh yet again trisha can put me right it had to be sized up i think to a dk or was it 1920s pattern because of course everything back then was shapeless and everybody was into egyptology back then because oh. that's when the car moon um and howard carter carter yeah 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 um was out there digging up artifacts and what have you wow a absolutely beautiful so i do love it um and thank you and i think your choice of colors certainly from the bottom i don't think you could have picked better colors um, no they, they work fantastic they, they do and and you don't know do you because you you put colors together so that they match but then when you want to offset show off certain parts of your world it's really hard sometimes to get mm. the right tonal um balance and that this is why i'm in awe of the likes of Janie crowfoot Kay facet debbie abrahams how do they know to mix these color combinations together it never fails to 
amaze and inspire me that you know not so long ago i would never have thought of putting orange and green together and today i think well, why not why not orange and purple why yeah. not you know it can work in the right circumstance it does doesn't it so that is beautiful well done and i know that there were comments about other people haven't finished there so well done and marion if you ever want to pair of scissors you know where to go Marian oh this is what happens when you tidy the house i didn't know i had so many pairs of scissors and i was always rooting around looking for a pair <laughs> And that's still not all of them. I've still got another two or three, I think, down downstairs. I think I've got one pair up here and a couple downstairs. And that doesn't include the kitchen scissors. So we'll we'll have a look at these because then we have so there are the scissors. If, I, I'm so pleased that you don't seem to have any two exactly the same. You've got an array of you could do a rainbow with that one, couldn't you? Yeah. Um, then let's have a look at the next one these are all plenty of zings there uh, and we were actually talking just again before we went live about chugu or has anyone used them um, jackie has jackie what are your thoughts on them jackie please let me know and how they compare to others so um, i think that's a good collection it's always the same, isn't it? When you want um, a different circular needle, you have to go into every single needle holding bag and box. Um, so that's a perfect idea. Love it. Um, more? Oh, it's so organised, isn't it? Do you actually knit in there? No, not yet. No? I might i might in the winter mm. because it'll be warm in there i reckon um and i put the buttons on by the way i've turned the buttons on. oh thank you so much i don't know what's happened there well there's been quite a few comments now oh has there well trisha's and you said she meant uh she mentioned your patterns from yesterday from louise zas bangham i have her book knit play color which enable folk to adapt her patterns to suit various yarns you have in your stash and she's produced the link tricia would you be kind enough to put it actually on the facebook page That's um brilliant thank you if you could. jackie says she doesn't crochet and not to shout at her um and brigitte goes don't shout at our carer i will have to explain the carer and jackie on another day there's not time now uh trisha says yes she thinks so and that's to a jacobean that's the stump work uh brigitte says yes very jacobean um lindy says i read out lindy's earlier and it's now often called raised work i think that's right you sort of put it over was it horse hair or something soft and they stitched over it um and brigitte says if i'm going to hardwick hall I would very much like to go along and deborah that hat is amazing love it so much well done um and that fantastic pattern that um, margaret did i think there was a little juggling with the motifs too 1923 pattern yes trisha you're right because even when i did my sample you had to get it because on the original the pattern wasn't symmetrical it was off center um jackie uh going sorry thought somewhat chigga goo goo chigga goo goo or something um knitting needles i think you use them my love and trisha goes lovely needles i'm a should go for socks will do after my next meeting got to go bye trisha bye bye and I, I will just go through the next one so we've got linda who says when the project bag you've made works to perfection oh wow please can we see how you've styled that because that's amazing it actually stays on the arm i like that so that's perfect linda thank you this is deborah before the hat was finished so that's she wasn't even there properly yesterday, was she? Um, 
I just can't believe how quickly she's done that hat. That's lovely. Um, we, um, men Marion mentioned it's in there about the knit night, the pattern that I, I bought yesterday. And Dawn actually shared this link. It's a book with some lovely um, patterns in it. Um, it's modern daily knitting, but that book there is modern lace patterns. Um, and it, uh, what I loved when I had a quick look at it, it said, this is it in DK, this is it in lace weight. Can you see the difference? So um, it's really good to see how lace patterns can work in different um, weights of wool mm. as well. Um, so really good. And there's lots and lots and lots of different books. So if you do dare click on that link and you're interested, you'll probably end up buying about four or five because uh, <laughs> it was really good. Uh, we said the pattern was from Google and I think that's it from yesterday. Yes, I'm not showing those men's yeah. things again. It just reminded me to shoot, not shout the carer. And Jackie says, yes, Chigagoo needles are the best. They right. Love. I am going to see what my next project is and I'm going to get myself a pair because I do know that, <clears throat> I know I've got these, uh, I'm just, I don't know what it is, I'm not a great fan of these, I love the cubics and I love the carbons uh, so of the knit pro, but I, 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 some, I don't know why, I love the colours, um, but I just don't get along with them, so I would really like to find um, a circular needle that I can get along with um i've got lots and lots that i inherited the old air, uh, aero ones yeah um but the plastic is just too firm so I, I sticky. 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 the other things i don't like about those wooden ones is you always have to test the size with a um a, a needle gauge Do you? because the size the sizing rubs off after a while well the these that I'm using the Addy, is it? It's it actually printed on the side. You see, it's nicely printed on the side. Here, and where is it? What size these are? Well, I'll tell you so something. Really six mil. That is six, and that is struggling to get through. I've really had to force that through. What size is it? Are they meant to be? Six. I think. See, they're closer to a 6.5 than a 6, because the 6 will only go through when I push it. Doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. It, it's just the tip that's meant to go through up until where the tip finishes, if you like. Or is it the whole needle? That's the meant the to whole go? needle shut well normally goes. It does go, but it's such a tight fit that, yeah. Oh, and Jackie says, maybe I should could send you one in the post for you to try send me a message on messenger is that for angela jackie or for me i think it must be angela oh, that we should be lovely. i'd love to um because like with everything isn't it if, if we want yes, it, angela. then it's good to buy the set um but hey it's 11.01 three My number husband. ones again <laughs> the zero so brigitte you probably look at that as well do it when uh, like it's 1101 i can see three number ones so anyway i will we will have to go now we are back tomorrow evening at 8 p.m um so the guild and everything i think this is the last day isn't it of the which has been fantastic so thank you i haven't been able to really get on too much but um, I know that you've been really, really enjoying it. And we will see you tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. You can bring yeah. tea, coffee, lemon tea, water, gin, bubbles, tea. gin, whatever you want. And bring some easy knitting because um, we can tend to overrun on a Wednesday night a little bit. And uh, sometimes we giggle quite a bit. Um, so we will see you tomorrow night. Thank you so much for coming on again, Marion. And uh, thank you to all my pleasure. Well. You take care, everybody. Bye. And stay safe. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye.